Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now today we're going to be busting more of your myths which you guys left in the comments section of the last myth busting video. So if you have any more be sure to leave them at the bottom of this video. But for this myth we're in Engitopia because I need somewhere with traffic jams and if you look down here there's quite a lot of traffic coming into Engitopia. And that's important because this myth is cars will use pedestrian only roads to avoid traffic. So in this game there's loads of different roads but this one at the end it's a pedestrian only street so no cars are allowed so if we were to try and like bypass this traffic using one of these roads then we can really see whether this would help or not so i reckon if we if we just come from like this roundabout say and perhaps just connect straight up there and you can sort of see everyone coming down here they could go oh my no way it's happening already no way <laughs> you cheeky little buggers oh what are you doing this is pedestrian only there's literally no shame. I mean, to be fair, they are driving slow, but like, you're not allowed up here. I mean, actually, are there are there any signs to say you're not allowed up there? To be fair to them, there's there's actually no signs. How do I know that that is pedestrian only? I mean, there's a give way sign. Yield. Literally, everyone's just driving up there now. Yeah, it's not even like a small proportion, like a little naughty person. It's just everyone's <laughs> using the pedestrian road. Oh, dear. what's the point of a pedestrian road if cars literally just drive up them? Like, that's every, every car entering this roundabout is going up there now. They're not even like trying to hide. They're like, okay, well, cars will use pedestrian only roads to avoid traffic. That myth is confirmed. <laughs> they really, really will. Anyway, for our next myth, we're on a new map just because I don't want to, I don't want to hurt Engitopia. So this one is water related and we've got, we've got quite a bit of water on here. So the myth is water doesn't evaporate. So what I'm thinking we do here is come to the landscaping tool and then just make like a little pondy stream thing back there. So that should flow up to there because I use the I use the level terrain tool. I might delete the trees actually because they could interfere. They could suck up the water. So trees, you're out of there. Right. And then when I'm satisfied the water has completely filled that area, I'm going to do two things. I think one, level terrain tool. I just like flatten the, the top of like the edge of it. So we do that sort of thing. And then we cut in as well. We make sure that there's only water here now. And now in the first city skyline, game if you waited long enough the water if it had no water source like we've done here it would disappear so the question is will this game work differently now something i want to do as well i'm going to go into the the developer mode oh, we're going to come into climate i'm going to override the precipitation and the cloudiness and the climate time because i don't want it to like start raining because if it starts raining then this like will fill up again potentially but yeah we'll just time lapse this and then we, we should be able to see fairly simply if the water level starts decreasing if evaporation is a thing. I mean, it might not be evaporation. It could be the water soaking into the ground. That would actually be more realistic than it evaporating. Right, well, turns out there is evaporation in this game. Also, there's a big tornado <laughs> interrupting the science here. I mean, it hasn't actually got over to here, but yeah, it completely evaporated in front of my eyes. So the myth water doesn't evaporate is busted. It definitely does. And just to 100% make sure it's not like the sea levels dropped or something. I'm just going to get the level terrain tool, just join them back up again. Then if we head down to like the actual level using this, if we look that way, hardly any water. If we look that way, it's way, way higher. So as you press play now, you can see the water from the right is flowing back in. From the left, it's not really flowing out because there's way less water there. So yeah, definitely does evaporate. Oh, anyway, I've just spotted over here a forest fire, which means we can move on to my next myth. Helicopter will not fly around tall buildings. Now, the only way I really know how to get helicopters in here is the, the fire helicopters. So whilst we have a fire burning there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy that tile boost. Then I'm just going to do a road from over here. Or actually, I'll just I'll just do it down here. In the fire and rescue tab, I'm going to put a firefighting depot down. I've just got to make sure they have electricity, water, and a place to poop. Right, and then I think this thing will be up and running, which means means a helicopter will spawn there and it should head straight for the for the forest fire to put it out. Now, I don't want to I don't want to do that now and then put a building in its way. I want it to know that there's a building there all the time. So, before I press play, before any helicopters can spawn, let's just come up here. Let's bung a little alley in like 
that way. Then if we head into signature buildings, we can get some really, really tall towers on the go. And basically, I just want to make sure from where the helicopter is going to travel and to where that is, that a helicopter has to fly around it. So let's shove another one down. Do that on that side of the road. Get some more in. All right. So from this little fire, there's literally, there's no line of sight to see where the helicopter is. So if I press play now, yes, we have helicopters. Where, wait, where are they going? Where are, oh, don't say they're going to that fire over there. What about this fire? Can they not see it? <laughs> oh, they've all just disappeared. Hang on. Oh, okay. So they are, oh, they're coming to this fire. Okay. Hang on a second. <laughs> Why did no one go to that fire? Is that because I blocked it? I'll tell you what, actually. I'm tempted to try and keep this fire going. So if I just plant like a load of spruces, like that will make quite a big fire, right? right? Let's press play and see if this fire does expand. Hopefully it will. And then hopefully the helicopters will take notice. I could move those buildings over that way. But I feel like that just defeats the object of, uh, of not putting the buildings in last minute. So we'll just speed this up. We'll see exactly how these work. Oh, wait, it's turned around. Why are you turning around? What are you oh, You're right there, mate. <laughs> right, okay. They are firefighting this fire now. Yes. Okay, so this fire is completely out. Okay, so now we have more chance of them attending the real fire. The fire that has gone out itself. Oh, there's got to be a fire thing in here. Aha, forest fire. Okay, nice. I've started a fire down here. I'm going to try and make it quite bad. So if I do start a vent again. Okay, there you go. We got, we got a fire down here. So helicopters are returning. Presumably just filling up some water again. Well, look, one's just spawned again. One's just spawned. So where is this going? It's heading towards our fire. Okay, so now we can finally see, will it ignore the buildings or will it fly around? I mean, to be fair, it looks like, oh, I was going to say it looks like it's going to fly around. It's flying through the gap. It has flown through the gap. It has, it has ignored the buildings. Not going to lie. Kind of unexpected that. I thought it would fly straight through them. All right, it's still trying to extinguish the fire on its own because maybe when it flies back, maybe then it will fly through the buildings. I can't believe it dodged them. Fair play. All right, so I think that's the last last of its water that is oh no it's still got 21 meter cubed in there oh no it's used it up okay it's used it up where's it going through the building it's gone through the building okay so <laughs> so the journey there was a fluke you nearly fooled me game that's why we do a fair test we try and keep it going as long as possible but yeah the myth helicopters will not fly around tall buildings confirmed they will not they'll fly straight through the buildings anyway whilst we're here there is there is another sort of myth I want to do because uh, that fire is blazing and it is about helicopters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all these buildings because we don't need them anymore. And the myth is helicopters fly at a constant height above the ground. Now, I think this is how like, do you remember in City Skylines 1, you had like helicopter tours? I think that's how they work. But I don't think there are helicopter tours in this game. So we're just going to have to use the fire helicopters again. But basically between this stretch, I'm just going to add some like lumpy bumpy terrain and see whether the helicopter flies straight or whether it follows like what the terrain does. So let's do a bit of a shift of the terrain tool and another shift like that. And then I want to add like a long sloping section like this. Oh yeah, that's a proper wedge. That is a proper wedge. All right, so then if I just do the final bit like that, then what we end up with is a nice little a nice little ramp down, up and then back down again between the, the firefighting helicopter depot and the actual fire itself. So what we should be able to do when, when this guy's finished using up his all his water, as he heads back, we should be able to see, will he, will he stay like at a constant height above the ground or will it just fly straight? And secondly, will it fly like through the ground? So that's the last of its water. Let's have a look. Probably from the side is the best bet. Let's just make sure. Yeah, it's definitely flying straight over. It's staying. Oh, it's staying at a flat level. It hasn't gone downhill. It's oh, it's actually going downhill. No, it's crashed. Oh, Oh, no. <laughs> okay, it's literally, it completely ignores terrain. Uh, so I guess then, the myth helicopters fly at a constant height above the ground. That is completely busted. Uh, they fly, they fly just wherever they want. Whatever they want to do, they'll do it. Uh, but I think essentially they fly at sort of like a constant like altitude, not not height above the ground, just altitude. You know, of course, until they come in for landing and then they go a bit lower, obviously. Cool. That's good to note. Right. So a new myth. You can terraform map tiles that you don't own. So at the moment, we 
we have this like dotted area. We can do whatever we want in there. We can build buildings. We can terraform it like we have there. But this myth is you can literally. So if I like were to take that level there, obviously inside we can do we can do that. This myth is you can terraform outside. Why would you lie to me like that? Exceed city limits. So you can terraform map tiles you don't own. Busted. Anyway, for this next myth, we're back in Engertopia, the lovely Engertopia. Yeah, and this myth is going to be really fun. It involves poo, but it also involves water. The myth is sewage flows faster than water. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure what sort of like poo physics would, would cause that to happen. Uh, but I'm not here to prove why or why not. I'm just to prove whether whether it is true or whether it isn't true. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use a little technique that I've learned in the past to like give myself loads, loads of like water. So I've got sewage here. I've got water here. If we just demolish a load of houses. Now, I also need to dezone all of these as well. Right. And then what I've learned, if I, if I literally just like punch a hole through this. So if I come to where is it shift terrain tool and then just like make a big old hole like that i can then do level terrain tool and select that bottom level and basically where i've made this deeper that is all now poo water so in terms of volume of sewage we have really gone gone to town there we've got a load of poo water in there so what i want to do i want to do the same for the actual the river next to it and then basically i just want to cap these off if i do a bit of that a bit of that right we've now got two similar bodies of water well one body of water one one body of sewage. If I just delete this road, I'm going to pause the game from this point and then I'm going to make my track. So in order to make my track, I am going to have to get rid of all the all the sewage, all the water in front of it. Now, what I found out, you can just fill up everything and that just gets rid of everything. So basically, by doing that, there's now no more water here. Right. OK, we press play. We now have the two the two liquids and then nothing in front of them over here. So what I want to do, I want to punch a hole like like down here somewhere. You can see there is still water there, but when I when I unclick, boosh, disappears. Okay, so let's just bring this water over there a bit. So that's gonna be the starting line. We'll bring the poo quite close, but over that side. All right, so they're both raring to go. I then just need to do like a slope. So if I pick a level up here, sort of, I don't know, maybe that level, and then just fill in that. I can then do slope terrain tool and I want to end up up there and we're starting from like down here. So we do that sort of thing and we do that the whole way across. All right, then we add a little sort of divider down the middle and we do a slope up the middle so it does that sort of thing. All right, and then we have the ultimate race course. All I got to do is delete these two berms and then we can see who wins, the poo or the water. Um, first, I probably need something at the bottom, uh, something that warrants getting destroyed by poo or a tsunami or a tsunami or a poonami in this case so we have a an engineered building it's got it does have a fountain out the front so it's got a bit of architecture but generally that makes that makes use of good space we've got a good roof on top product of engineering that's going to get hit by the tsunami on the other side we've got the film actor mansion product of architecture i mean look at the roofs look at the roofs they don't need to be curved like that zero thought has gone into that building so if poo wins that will get destroyed by the sewage water um clearly my money is on normal water but to be honest i imagine Imagine they're just going to go at the same speed. Now, to make this fair test, I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to take level terrain tool and pick a level sort of. So there's definitely enough water coming down, probably down there. So we'll then cut that out like that. We'll do the same for this side. All right, and then you can see both of these are the same. We've got we've got a vertical wall of poo. We've got a vertical wall of water. So the question is, which is going to win? I've pressed play. Let's watch what's happening. I mean, to, oh, actually, is the sewage water faster? It looks slightly faster. Right, they're both about to get to the slope. The sewage is winning. <laughs> what? No way. I did not see that coming. Is it actually going to win? If we watch from above, the sewage is definitely going to make it first, I think. I think they're traveling at the same rate, though, to be fair. But as we watch the product of architecture get swallowed up by the Poonami, the tsunamis barely touched the engineering building. And I mean, to be fair, I feel like, I feel like the sewage was quicker. It has completely buried that mansion. <laughs> In fact, will it actually get destroyed? It's being completely... It's leaking through the sunroofs. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's now very much under underwater. This structure has been flooded and is being damaged. Uh, still standing though, interestingly. Over this way, the, the engineered building is still, it is still working as well. It hasn't collapsed yet. By the way, look, the sewage is overspilling. It's definitely winning the battle against the water. Is that because there's more of it? They look pretty even up the top. I feel like sewage is just faster. So I can't really believe I'm saying this, but the myth of sewage flows faster than water I think it's confirmed. <laughs> I don't understand how that happened. Anyway, for our next myth, I'm heading just over to a little bit of a, a less built up area. I have severed all the sewage works in this place, so it's not it's not looking great. But uh, for this myth, I need to find where my pipes are. Okay, there's pipes sort of everywhere, which is lovely. So I'm going to focus down here because you can clearly see there's, there's pipes underground there. Uh, oh, there's electricity above the ground. I'll tell you what, I might move that below the ground. So if I just say elevate minus 10 and do that sort of thing. I want to do high power cables as well. If I bring them down that way, not to there, you can you can see we have underground high voltage cables, underground low voltage cables, and then we've got water mains and sewage all underground because the myth we're going to be testing is underground pipes or cables are invisible. Now, obviously in the underground view, you can definitely see them. They are definitely there. But what if we were to dig them up with the landscape? escaping tool. So if we use shift terrain tool and then oh boy just get rid of it completely we end up with a bit of a mess. My camera doesn't like this. I should probably make this neater. So let's just snap a level like that. Okay I think that's good. You can't see any of the services. They're still definitely under the ground. Uh, something which is quite weird. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that happened. Look how tall these posts are. Um, but the actual, the underground services, I don't see them. Now, one thing I do know, if I go back to like the absolute carnage I just had of shifting all the way down, I think this makes some of the terrain a little bit spicy and it gives us a little, a little view. Yes, inside the terrain. And you can see the pipes are invisible. There should be pipes poking out the ground if they existed. But you can see there, there's like big old knots is taken out. If I just try and get my camera in a good position. Okay, I think that's good. If I go to the underground view, yeah, this one which shows the power cable. Can you see this? There's a cable there. If I turn that off and like flick on and off, the cables are 100% invisible because you should be able to see it in that gap. We can say the same for drainage because look where these little notches are. If we just flick between on and off, they completely disappear. So underground pipes or cables are invisible is confirmed. They're invisible. Okay, so this next myth is all about wind, particularly the wind turbine. Now, the myth is wind turbines make more power on higher ground. So you can see there, electricity production is between 0 and 5 megawatts, depending on how fast the wind is. Uh, and when you click on the wind turbine, you can see like where the wind is. Like these arrows show the wind and how fast they are. And generally, the like red of the arrow, the faster the wind is, the more power you'll make. Whereas over this way, it's like they're a bit lighter. So you make less energy. Uh, you will notice generally on top of hills, the wind is a lot faster. The thing is, is that only, is that like dependent on the, on the terrain or is it dependent on where they've decided to put it on the map? Because up here, I made this massive, massive hill. Have engineer. It's where, it's where engineers go to heaven. Um, oh, look, you can see there, they're actually blasting off a rocket, a space rocket. See, because us engineers, we build really tall hills so we can get to space a bit easier rather than having to launch from down there, use more fuel. We're, we're already halfway to space. Anyway, is there more wind up here is the question. Now, the thing is, I don't really know what causes it, but I've placed that up there and there's absolutely no energy. Is that because it's not connected to anything? I thought it would still spin, to be honest. If we connect it to the grid, there's still, oh yeah, look, low wind speed, minus 100%. Buildings can lose or gain efficiency based on different factors. So I guess the fact here is just low wind speed, but this is as tall as we can go. Okay, I tell you what, I think I know how to do this sort of in a fair test. If we put two wind turbines like quite close to each other, so they are both spinning. Yeah, they're both making energy, five megawatts each. So that's good. Oh, I was going to say, can I then change the terrain height? No, apparently not. I've also just flooded this. Oh, hang on though. Hang on. That one's slowing down. That's at 69% efficiency. Nice. Yeah. This one is at, oh, this one's at 58%. Hang on. The left one's spinning way faster, but producing less energy. Is that because of what I did or did the wind just change? That is the trouble in this game. Like, I don't know what causes it. I don't know if technically
likely that's high now, which means it's not producing any energy or whether the wind's just stopped completely. Apparently, it's still working at 70% efficiency. But right, when the ground's just normal, it's at 100% efficiency. Let's just see. If I were to, say, shift terrain all the way up and build another one in the exact same spot, when I press play, it's still at 100% efficiency, 5 megawatts. So if I press pause now, then go all the way down. So we're now, we're now underground, basically. We're really low. Plop that in the same spot. Press play. Efficiency, 100%. Okay, so I think all that matters is the, the location that you pick, like the, the arrows. I don't think you can change how, how like red the arrows are. So if I like make a big old hill. Oh no. When I look at the arrows, they have gone red. Oh, well, I'm confused now. Hang on, let me just delete everything up here. Is it to do with the steepness? If you look at the wind speed up there, can you see like the arrows are like completely sort of flat? They're all white and they're not like long in the slightest. Is that because this is like flat on top? All right, hang on, hang on. We've got to do a test here. So level terrain. And so what I've got, I've got completely flat terrain there. I've got a, a shallow slope and then a steep slope. If we have a look at these, oh, it does affect it, I think, because we've got a steep bit there. Yeah, I don't think it's the height. I think it's sort of like the steepness, maybe like the jaggedness. So if we do shift terrain tool, we'll make it really small. Can we do stuff like that? If we then look at that, can we see we've got, yeah, we've got loads more like reddish arrows. I think anyway, just to confirm, let's flatten this one more time. So completely flatten that. There we go. And then when we go back to the wind, yes, they're all the same color. Okay, so wind turbines make more power on higher ground. That is busted. That is not true. But wind turbines make more power on like deeper ground, I think. Interesting. I learned something and I think that might actually help me in my like future cities. Anyway, for today, I think that's enough myth busting. If you want me to bust your myth, leave it below in the comments and I'll try and get to it next time. But for now, I'll say peace, love and Bith musters. Bye guys.